Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for free sports picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I consider yesterday to be a big moment for the sport of boxing. Right? It highlights really the fact that there isn't a lot of consensus in the sport on a lot of things. The argument concerning the Canelo Aris Landy Lara fight really is not on who won the fight. It is on how you score a fight. Now what I want people to do right now is to on my channel page just pause this video I need to have you go to the favorites on my channel page it's the morning after the fight there is a link to the fight itself right before you listen to this video I need to have you look at the fight right understand the way the copyright world works right now Sometimes fights get posted on YouTube and they stay on YouTube. But often they get pulled by a party claiming they own the copyright to the fight. Now in this, you know, internet, social media world, incredibly, right, the fighters, the managers, the promoters haven't yet figured out that the best advertising for the sport of boxing is to have these videos going through the internet so you need to assume as you hear this video that the video of the fight itself which right now is listed in my favorites right another youtuber posted it might get yanked in a few hours that video is crucial because it tells you all you need to know about the lack of consensus in boxing. As you go around the net, you're going to see numerous pundits opining about who actually won the fight. The variance is greater than usual. You either saw the fight one way or you saw the fight the other way. ESPN right now, Dan Rayfield, guy I respect, had Canelo winning the fight by four rounds. Understand, one of the judges had Canelo winning the fight by six rounds. Now compare and contrast that with the multitude of people who have the opposite scorecard, who believe Eris Landy Lara won this fight. Okay, so I need to have you right here look at a video of the fight and then come back and hear the rest of what I have to say. Now, if you're still here, let me say this. Understand, yesterday for me was a disaster. Right? A disaster. A blowout. I not only lost on my main bet, which was Eris Landy Lara, the underdog, plus 150 underdog, to win the fight. Right? I, you know, I thought the underdog was going to win this fight. Right? But my hedge of Saul Alvarez by KO also failed. To make my night even less entertaining, if that was possible, I had the underdog. And yes, I'm going to continue to bet on underdogs I think are live underdogs. But I had the underdog, Johan Perez, against Mauricio Herrera. Now that fight I haven't seen yet. I understand officially that fight was a majority decision. Right? Okay, fair enough. I congratulate Mauricio Herrera on his win. He is an underrated fighter. I encourage everyone to watch the video I made before the Herrera-Danny Garcia fight. But just no betting-wise, I was on the other side of that play. I took the underdog in that fight, too. So if this film were thermonuclear... And if it could, you know, change colors based on moods, just understand in terms of pain and suffering, I would be 
read all over. So I don't want anyone to think that I'm just a disinterested neutral party here. I'm not. I'm a gambler who was with Laura on the bet and I was with Johan Perez in that fight. Let's talk about the Laura fight. I'll just put it to you this way. Put me among those who believes that Arislan de Lara, and I didn't think he was on his game, but even not on his game, I thought he won the fight by several, let me repeat that, several underlined rounds. I don't know whether or not he took Canelo to Cuban, to the Cuban School of Boxing. But the one thing I know is that he did take Canelo to some school of boxing. Whether it was the Cuban school of boxing, I'm not sure. But I thought he, at points in this fight, was putting on a clinic. Now let me say this. Before I go further, let me just talk about some of the strengths and weaknesses of the fighters. And let me just say too. Because I know many people now are shaking their heads. I understand. Many people believe Canelo won this fight. Let me just tell you. I did not see the fight live. I was at some event at Candlestick Stadium. It's a Bay Area story. And I was out barbecuing with Canelo fans. So, of course, we were talking about the fight we were not watching at that time, right? And uh, during the conversation, I asked these guys, I said, who's going to win this fight? And everyone said, Canelo. So I'm always interested in other points of view, especially when it comes to boxing, right? You don't want to be too much in a cocoon. So I asked people why they thought Canelo was going to win the fight. And to my utter amazement, at least three people told me they thought Canelo had the superior boxing skills to Eris Landy Lara. Right? Let's just say I was lucky I did not have food in my mouth because it would have hit the floor. Right? I was a bit surprised. Now, as you watch the fight, or as you've watched the fight, I want you to think of boxing in terms of a rhythm. Right? There's a certain rhythm each fighter has. Now, when you are watching the fight, just ask yourself, who's dictating the rhythm of the fight? Who's disrupting the other fighter's rhythm more? Now, years ago, Lara faced Paul Williams. I took Paul Williams in that fight. Afterwards, I got ripped here online for the post-fight video. <laughs> that video's still up. Read the comments. Now, in that fight, there was a clear issue, clear issue, on whether volume, Williams threw a lot more punches than Lara, could be counterpunching precision. Lara landed more shots than Williams, right? And Lara was much more precise. He was much more accurate. In this fight, there is no such debate. There is no such debate. Not only is Lara more accurate, but the two guys throw about the same number of punches, according to CompuBox. Now, I believe the CompuBox numbers are off. What my eyes tell me is that Lara actually threw and landed many more punches than Canelo. Right? The margin on combi box isn't as big as I believe the margin was in the fight. But I'm not even sure if I understand the argument for Canelo. He's less accurate than Lara. He's missing punches by several inches. He's on his front foot and he can't find Lara. He can't cut off the ring. Right? Laura is doing things, you know, if you're watching around and one guy is coming in, faking, right? The other guy throws punches and misses. Why? Then gets hit with counters and then the guy throwing the counters walks away. To me, the guy throwing the counters has won that exchange. 
right? Boxing's not about effort. Boxing's about results. So I'll say this. And understand, this is just one point of view from someone who lost the bet, right? Who's a lot poorer today than he was literally right before the fight. I believe that Canelo has the gift that Ali, Ray Leonard, Oscar De La Hoya before the Trinidad fight, right? Manny Pacquiao before the third Marquez fight had, right? We all knew Ali didn't go to the body. We all knew Ray Leonard wasn't the best inside, right? Going into the Duran fight. We all know that Oscar De La Hoya and Manny Pacquiao didn't really have right hands. We know that about Pacquiao right now. But yet these guys are so charismatic. There's a charisma gap in their fights that we applaud them when they come and they make a great effort to win. Right? My argument to you is simply Canelo fights look better the day of the fight than they do a week later. As you look at the tape of this fight a week from now, I believe it's going to be obvious that Canelo really didn't look that good. Well, let's dive into the two guys. Let me talk about what I didn't like about both fighters. Arislandi Lara. You know what? He was too outside in. Right? He's operating too much from the outside. I would have preferred at least moments in the fight where he operates from the inside out. Sooner or later, you have to put a shoulder on a guy. Right? Sooner or later, you have to show us an inside game. If you're too outside in, then it's going to look like you're moving too much. You're moving away from the action too much. Right? As they say in boxing, right, you're running too much. I thought Lara was a bit too outside in. Understand, too, let me say this. You know, there's a way to move without looking like you're moving too much, especially against a fighter like Canelo, who is all in. Right? It would have been interesting if Lara would have rather than move away out of the frame after landing counters would have just moved to the side and been within arm's reach of landing more punches right that's the difference between Lara and someone like Ray Leonard Ray Leonard could throw combinations look at the Leonard Hearns fight Right? You know, Ray Leonard, late in that fight, just moves to the side and then is hitting Hearns with combinations. Eris Landy Lara is more of a pot shotter. Well, if you're going to pot shot, at least give us the illusion that you're close to the man engaged in battle. Right? I didn't think Eris Landy Lara showed us enough inside out. I didn't think he was up close as much as he could have been. And I'm someone who believes he won the fight by a few rounds. Another point on Lara is I feel he cuts it too close defensively. Canelo is one of the hardest punchers in the sport. Really, Canelo's calling card is a short, compact left hook. The punch that knocked out Carlos Baldemir. Look at that tape. Baldemir is unconscious before he hits the floor. Now, Lara, I understand he's a technician, but he's so confident in his defensive skills, and it backfired on him in the Alfredo Angulo fight, that Lara is just ducking under the left hook. Doesn't have a shoulder up. Doesn't have a hand up. He's just ducking under the left hook. It didn't cost him in this fight, but there are going to be fights where he's against opponents who are a bit more adaptive than Canelo and can change the angle 
right? I believe if Laura were to fight, let's say, a left hooker like Floyd Mayweather, Mayweather by probably the second or third round would change the angle of the hook from this to a little bit lower. Doesn't have to go to the body. Just has to go to where Lara's ducking his head. One of the problems with technicians is they're so accustomed to fighting non-technicians on the way up that when they get in the ring with the guy who can change the angles of the fight, that defense where you're dodging bullets by inches might not work as well. Another problem with Lara is he needs to be more conscious of the crowd. I'll tell you what, if you're making a guy miss, like Lara was making Canelo miss, and CompuBox aside, no one is going to tell me Canelo landed 20% of his punches or 23%. Right? Just look at the fight. Canelo's missing a lot more than that. When you make a guy miss, make sure the crowd and judges know it. What's wrong with shaking a head? What's wrong with a smile from time to time? What's wrong with waving at a guy from time to time? There's a moment in the third round, I thought it was a good moment, where, you know, Lara puts his hands out like this. Right? That should have happened more often. Frame your work. Right? Make sure the people understand that part of your game is making the other guy miss. Educate us, the fans. Right next, you need to make Canelo pay more for his misses. Canelo's episodic. Right? Canelo comes in and then he'll start throwing body punches. Not one punch. He's not a pot shotter. He'll throw three or four punches. Now, if you have timed it, like Laura did, where when Canelo comes in, you take a step back and Canelo's throwing punches that aren't hitting anything. I believe the great counter punchers take a step forward at that moment, right? Canelo's throwing punches. He's not landing punches. If his hands are occupied, why not hit him, make him pay more for misses? Too often in this fight, Lara would jump back, Canelo would throw punches, miss, but throw punches, and then Lara would just walk away. It would have been nice to see Lara, instead of walking away, time at least some of those to come in with hard counters. Now let's talk about Canelo and understand very few people in the sport have the kind of charisma that Canelo has. I can't even define charisma, but I'll put it to you this way. Some fighters are loved. Some fighters aren't, regardless of talent level, right? Let me let you in on a secret. Bernard Hopkins was a better fighter when he was younger than he is right now, right? Bernard was a very dominant middleweight champion, but Bernard wasn't loved then. He wasn't. You'd watch a Bernard Hopkins fight, he'd be doing work, the crowd would be quiet. Bernard wasn't considered a draw. It wasn't until the Bernard Hopkins Trinidad fight that Hopkins seemed to emerge in the public consciousness and by then Hopkins had already been champ for several years. Well, now Bernard is loved. So now Bernard can have a fight where he throws less than 400 punches, like his last fight against Babel Chubinov, and people are cheering. The crowd's more active now at Bernard Hopkins fights than they were when Bernard Hopkins was Bernard Hopkins. Right? You know, Charisma doesn't necessarily correlate to when the guy is in his prime. It doesn't. If you, if you go back and if you look at the Ali Liston rematch, look at the full tape. When Ali comes in the ring for that fight, he's booed. That's not opinion. That's historical fact. He's booed. Ali at that point was on the top of his game. Right? And so, my point to you is simply this. Canelo right now is love. People need to realize that fact. I understand any criticism I have to say of Canelo is going to fall flat here. I know it because I understand Canelo's like Pacquiao was before the third Marquez fight. 
Let me say this. Canelo can't land a jab against the mobile southpaw. As you look at the film, just count Canelo's jabs, or the lack of jabs. He can't land a jab against the mobile southpaw. Before this fight, I was comparing him to Vladimir Klitschko. Let's just say Klitschko's jab's a little bit better than Canelo's jab. It's noticeably absent in this fight. Right? Let me say this too. Canelo has a problem cutting off the ring. You heard me mention Ali and uh, Liston. You know the first fight. Sonny Liston looks as lost trying to cut off the ring as Canelo does here. He's following Eris Landy Lara all over the ring. Let's just say this didn't feel like I was watching Joe Fraser. If you want to see how the ring is cut off, just watch a Roberto Duran fight. Right? Just watch Joe Fraser, Bob Foster. Right? There are ways to put the other guy on the clock, and if he's moving, you have to move in such a way that the guy is cornered. Canelo at 23, about to turn 24, doesn't do that well. Can we agree, looking at this film, that Canelo doesn't have fast feet? Right? Just look at his feet. As you watch the fight, just look at the feet. It's going to be astonishing how much faster a foot Laura is than Canelo. Can we also agree? And I know I'm sounding hard, but look. This isn't about talking sports, it's about talking gambling. Can we agree that Canelo cannot match the hand speed of the top end of his division? He just can't. Let me say this too. If Canelo fights Miguel Cotto, you're going to notice that Cotto has faster hands than Saul Alvarez. Right? Canelo's a huge puncher. You need to see Canelo as a puncher. He's more of a puncher than a boxer. Right? One man's opinion. Let me say this too. Canelo is too all in. Bit too scripted. He's flat footed. When he comes in, he decides he's going to throw a combination. When he starts the combination, he's not going to finish until he ends the combination. That leaves him vulnerable. Because there are times in this fight where he comes in to start a combination, he already can't land a jab. So he comes in, he's throwing hooks, he'll miss the first hook, he'll follow through on the combination. I'm just telling you that if you do that, and Canelo weighed, I believe, according to some reports, more than 170 pounds in this fight. If you do that against Janady Golovkin, if you do that against Andre Ward or James DeGale, you're in trouble. You can't be out there missing multiple punches, right? Just throwing a combination and missing multiple punches. What do you think the other guy is going to do? Not everyone is going to jump back like Arislandi Lara. Some guys are going to jump to the side. So while you're throwing punches and missing them, they're going to be there to do work. By the way, if you want to see a good fight where a guy is jumping right to the side, look at Manny Pacquiao. Give him his props against Joshua Clotty. Right? Manny Pacquiao comes in. He's jumping in at angles. He's right at the side of Clotty. And he's throwing combinations to make Clotty pay for a passive defense. Canelo here is too all-in to the point where he's throwing combinations in thin air, right? I believe that could lead him vulnerable to some of the guys, Cotto, uh, Golovkin, uh, DeGale, Ward, who he might be headed toward fighting. Probably the biggest problem I have with Canelo, and it's a big problem. It's why I would take Lara in a rematch. Right? It's really why I took Lara the first time. Right? Is Canelo can't change tempo. Watch the fight again according to a river. You're going to see Lara's doing things where Canelo comes up and Lara fakes like he's going left. Then he goes right. Right? And he just backs away. 
Canelo can't change tempo like that. So Canelo comes in with a script. He's too scripted. And then as Lara starts to go this way, Canelo's thinking script A. Then when Lara shifts to go that way, Canelo can't adjust. The whole fight is really about tempo. Right? Lara's really a jazz man. He's going like this. Canelo's just going like this, up and down, up and down, up and down. Right? Fighters can time that. Lara has Canelo timed early in this fight. Right? And so, I'll just say this. I understand the argument that Canelo's on his front foot the entire fight. Canelo is the one making the action, right? Canelo is the pursuer. Lara is the runner, right? That's the argument of the people who think Canelo won this fight. Let me offer a response to that. Canelo's walking into punches, right? Canelo can't make the adjustments. He never, you know, Lara is ducking under his left hook the entire fight. Canelo never lowers that left hook. He does lower it to hit to the body, but he never lowers that left hook slightly to conform with or to adjust to Lara ducking under it. Right? Also, I'm still amazed if, if Canelo doesn't have significantly greater volume than Lara and gets hit with a higher percentage of Lara shots and is being countered methodically by Lara, then what exactly is it that Canelo did in this fight that got him the win? Right? I don't I don't understand it. Right? What I want people to do is to not listen to my opinion. I want them to watch the fight. I want you to think in terms of a rhythm. I want you to realize that Canelo's rhythm is being disrupted throughout the fight. And I want you to notice that Canelo cannot land a jab. The only jab landing in the fight, the only jab, is Eris Landy Lawrence. By the way, let me just say this too. And it's an indictment on Lara. As Canelo is coming forward, unable to cut off the ring on you, as he's moving toward you repeatedly, you should have busted him up with a jab. Right? You should have held your ground, stayed closer to the pocket, and you should have hit him with the jab and made that a staple of your attack. I think Lara is a little bit too low volume here. If he just pumped his jab more, I think we would all have realized that this fight really wasn't that close. Right? I thought Lara won the fight. I understand I sound like a sour gambler here, I'll tell you. Yesterday was a complete disaster for me. Right? I'm at ground zero. There's shrapnel all over. Right? But... As I watch the fight, I mean, really, I have a hard time giving Canelo more than four rounds. Let me just say this. I thought the first three rounds are clearly Lara rounds. I thought in rounds five and six, and I know the judges may disagree with me, but I thought in rounds five and six, Lara is putting on a clinic. To the Canelo people who believe that he came back in the second half of the fight, I encourage you to look at rounds 10 and 11 again. Right? Lara finishes the fight strongly. Right? If this fight were in Havana, is there anyone, or Guantanamo, is there anyone watching this video who doubts that Lara would have won at least eight rounds the identical fight let me also say too fights look different the second time around do me a favor and just watch this fight a week from now right Canelo like Ali Leonard Delahoy and Pacquiao 
looks better on fight night when you see the fight because you're then wondering how exactly is you know Ali or Canelo gonna deal with certain attributes of the opponent and then you see your idol in there and he's all in he's going for it Ali's actually trying to beat George Foreman right Canelo's actually trying to beat Floyd Mayweather or Eris Landy Lara right all I can say is in that kind of atmosphere it's not surprising that two of the worst scorecards I've ever come across the 114-114 scorecard in the Canelo Mayweather fight and the 117-111 scorecard in this fight could exist right you don't get such scores going in the direction of Arislandi Lara you get such scores going in the direction of Canelo because people seem to be using a different metric here if Canelo doesn't match Paul Williams's volume keep in mind the fans here online thought Lara won that Paul Williams fight there at least the Paul Williams people had the argument of volume thrown here Canelo doesn't even have that you know to hear that Canelo is throwing hard punches in a fight we're Laura doesn't get knocked down Laura doesn't get staggered right okay Canelo's throwing a lot of, of hard punches he's missing a lot of hard punches he's getting countered off a lot of hard punches is that enough to give him the decision here you're going to watch videos that say, yeah, Canelo won the fight. Yeah, the judges made the right decision. This isn't one of those videos. I thought Lara got robbed. I'm disappointed in the scoring. As you know, I bet on the fight. I had Lara to win the fight. I was rooting for Lara in the outcome. Right? But a week from now, I suspect you're going to revisit this. I think this is the kind of decision that hurts both fighters going forward if you're a Lara supporter you're wondering why Lara stayed so far away from the pocket for most of the fight the fight clearly was winnable I thought he won the fight by a margin as it was but he could have put an exclamation point on it he left a lot on the table if you're a Canelo fan you know, this feels like Oscar against Pernell Whitaker. This feels like Chavez against Pernell Whitaker. Right? This doesn't quite feel like a win. I believe Canelo fans in their heart know that their guy looks shaky. That their guy couldn't land a jab that their guy's mobility might not be what they thought it was. That's how I see it. Let me hear how you see it. No need to pull the punch. This is the rough part of the internet. Go ahead and leave your comments and I'm going to hear Dwyer you're disgruntled. Dwyer I told you Canelo by decision was the hedge and stuff like that. Uh, what I want to know though, really, from those who believe that Canelo won the fight is what's the basis for that belief can you accuse the other guy of running when the other guy actually lands more punches than your fighter that's the question here can you accuse the other guy of running when the other guy is never hurt during the fight right there's no excessive holding in this fight right there's a guy breaking the other guy's tempo literally round after round there's a guy preventing the other guy from landing jabs literally round after round there's a guy who's off to a fast start can we at least agree that Erislandi Lara wins at least two of the first three rounds there's a guy off to a fast start who closes strong? Who lands more punches and does so at a higher percentage and is never hurt by the puncher in the fight? 
to YouTube Nation explain to me how that guy loses by 117-111 on one judge's card and actually ends up losing the decision. Explain to me why this fight's even considered a close fight. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.